Across the Atlantic Ocean lies a subtropical oasis that beams of exotic beauty. With its signature pink sand, aqua water, and classic rum swizzle, Bermuda is the gem of the Atlantic. Journey today with the Reinsurance Podcast as we head to this island paradise to take part in Bermuda's annual risk summit. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Reinsurance Podcast here in Bermuda. I am your co-host, Jared Lee. And I'm Ben Rays, and delighted to welcome a special guest with us today from Hiscox Re and ILS. We've got Matt Wilkin, who is the CEO. Welcome to the show, Matt. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Uh, delighted to be here. Um, and on a somewhat rainy day in Bermuda, but uh, <laughs> I can assure you from my nearly 17 years here in Bermuda, it's not often raining every day. So yeah. great oh, place to be. Special occasion. Time just as the Brits are over <laughs> yeah. to escape from the usual dreary <laughs> gloom. But uh, no, we, we're really pleased to have you on the show with us today to give us a bit of a flavor of the market at the moment, uh, to give us a taste of what the Risk Summit has been like so far, a couple of days in. Shall we start with that? How's Bermuda Risk Summit been for you so far? Uh, really exciting and and, uh, and still still thinking very much about the COVID days when we mm-hmm. weren't able to get face to face. Um, the, the value of being able to see so many places, so many faces in mm. one place and being able to have that face to face is is really, really invaluable. Yeah. So exciting. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. And, and what are people talking about? What are people excited about at the moment? I think more than ever, um, I've got a wider range of, of topics of conversation than I've ever probably experienced before. Mm. So I'll just start off with the traditional what's going on in the world of reinsurance market. But there's so much happening. It extends from AI to governance, it extends from climate change all the way through to uh, capital availability and many, many more topics. Yeah. Well, perhaps we should dive into the market then yeah. at that point and uh, talk a little bit about what is going on out there. What are you seeing? And obviously you've been with Hiscox fairly recently as, as a joiner there, but how have you found the market through Hiscox's eyes? So, um, yeah, thank you. Uh, I've, I've, I'm relatively new to Hiscox, been here just over two years, mm-hmm. uh, came in as a CEO for, for Re and ILS. Um, but I've uh, been in the industry since 1991, so I cut mm-hmm. my teeth uh, so over 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, and I can truly say that, uh, that the world of reinsurance always sends you some challenges. Um, what I've seen over the last couple of years has, has almost been uh, extraordinary in terms of the uh, return to profitability of the market mm-hmm. that was incredibly competitive over yeah. the previous five yeah. years. Yeah. So what is, on, with your role now and the, the hat you're wearing at um, Hiscox Re and ILS, which is sort of the, the biggest sort of point of growth in the industry that as the market's beginning to harden, what are your sort of target objectives um, going forward and how did you guys perform sort of last year? So performance last year was, was fantastic. We, we're in a group that Re and ILS is only a, a part of, mm-hmm. and we represent about 20% of the overall Hiscox group. Um, we came out with record profit uh, this year, and that was released last week, of yeah. which we're, we're really proud of. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. And, and Re and ILS have been a, a significant contributor to that. Mm. Um, and with Re and ILS contributing somewhere in the range of about 260 million of profit to the overall group, you know, we, we've, we feel we've done, a, we've done ourselves proud. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very exciting. I think we've seen that in a broader context of a market that has recovered and you know, effectively drawn a line in the sand of where it wants to play uh, in the last couple of years. How have you found the market, on one hand, uh, dealing with various challenges around the world, but also facing up to new ones? What are, what are the main themes on the headwinds and tailwinds at the moment? Yes, there's a lot going on at the minute, isn't there? So we're seeing the world of reinsurance pricing being at, at, a, at an extreme and it's, mm-hmm. it's high. Um, it needed it because, frankly, the uh, returns in the reinsurance global arena have been relatively anemic over the mm. past five years. Um, and the cost of volatility certainly wasn't being addressed. It has been. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, one, one swallow a summer doesn't make. And whilst there are a lot of good, uh, good results coming out there, um, we need to ensure that we continue to have discipline within the market. Mm-hmm. Um, the world is continually facing more challenge, whether it's climate, whether it's geopolitical, mm-hmm. um, whether it's fungibility of capital. Um, there are a lot of things that we need to think about when we're actually trying to estimate where we're going to go forward into the mm-hmm. future. And what do you see as the primary growth drivers for the business over the next few years? What's sort of on your horizon as things you're looking to sort of improve upon and, and find ways to grow? Um, the, the, there's a lot out there. I think the, the world continually needs to increase its uh, its it's protection around volatility. Mm-hmm. Um, we Climate change is on every single board member's lips of every company. Yeah. Um, with climate change comes a need for us as an industry to be able to address that. Um, that means being able to afford 
to get new capital in to support the increasing need uh, to protect the, insur the insureds mm -hmm. out there. Um, and I think even, even this year now, we expect to see somewhere in the region of maybe five to six billion dollars additional limit purchase just in the US for the remainder of the year. Yeah. So there is increasing demand in what we consider to be the, the, the relatively vanilla cat world. Mm -hmm. But there's an entirely different array out there of, of, of need as well. Um, we see a continual growth on cyber. The, mm -hmm. the cyber market is, is rife and growing. Um, that's an area where we could do to attract more capital in mm -hmm. order to be able to satisfy needs. Um, it's, a, it's a complex market, uh, and it's one perhaps that is at the moment served mainly by the, the traditional reinsurance and insurance market as mm -hmm. opposed to some of the capital market that's come in to support the natural peril type protections. Yeah. As we continue to go forward, I think we'll see more of an interest from capital markets coming in. And indeed, we've already seen a couple of cap bonds, maybe four cap bonds in the, in the cyber world space uh, released already. So yeah. watch this space. That will continue to grow. Yeah. Um, we also have a, a, a globe that's currently impacted geopolitically. Mm. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. With uncertainty comes a need for insurance and reinsurance. Mm -hmm. um, we are an experienced industry that's been able to deal with, with some of this political violence, war, terror, mm -hmm. and strikes and riots and civil commotions and things like that. Um, there is an increasing need for that, and, and we're here to be able to help that expand as well. So uh, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Uh, Another area that I've seen really grow has been one of cat bonds. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen a, a significant increase in, in the cat bond issuance over the past year. Mm -hmm. um, it's healthy. Uh, I think the ability to be able to deal with volatility in the world and have multiple ways of being able to address it is really, it is really important. Um, we ourselves actually launched a cat bond fund at, um, for the beginning of 1-1-2024. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. And, and I guess we're talking about uh, capital and cap bonds here in Bermuda. What special role do you think Bermuda plays for the whole industry on these kind of topics, being, being based here and being part of Hiscoxry and ILS? What's, what's it like being on the, the island where the magic happens, I guess? It, it's, uh, it's a fantastic place to do business. Mm. Um, and, it's, and Bermuda has become and is a, a critical component of the world's reinsurance market. And I, I, loved, I loved the ability to be able to have so many and so much talent in such a small place, mm -hmm. all working together and talking together. Um, and it, it's reminiscent to me of uh, starting my career in, in Lloyd's 30 years ago, where the market yeah. seemed quite small and concentrated, but a huge amount of wealth of knowledge and ability. And that's what it feels like here, geographically yeah. quite small, but its footprint is global and massive. Yeah, and I think that's very reminiscent of like the market writ large. The reason you have these sort of hubs is because the centralization and concentration of talent and knowledge and expertise and then capital just allows it to centralize that and then deploy it worldwide, which Bermuda, again, is sort of leading and at the forefront of, of many of those efforts, which is really exciting. Yeah, and, we, and we've, been, we've been very privileged to have a regulator here who's been really open, has been very pro-business mm -hmm. um, and that's encouraged a lot of investment in Bermuda and continues to do so and you know it's it's positive for everyone yeah and so you've, you've had a stellar set of results you've got a bunch of challenges we discussed that the industry has got to tackle at large what are what's on your menu for the the year to come and, and the years after that what are you excited about uh, there, there's so much going on isn't there um and there are so many challenges that we have to face I, I don't know what, I don't know how to list them all out <laughs> yeah. um but but Here's one. Let's start off with climate. Mm -hmm. the, the climate change, it's um, so fundamentally critical to what we do. Um, the, it, we have invested a lot of time, energy, effort, and money with our own research mm -hmm. development teams in order to try and best understand this uh, and, and the changes and challenges that climate presents. Um, it's not just about climate, though. Uh, we've got changes in, in terms of population distribution. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing more people want to go and live next to the coast and yep. we see growing numbers of population and growing um, wealth yeah. uh, we've seen the inflationary values impact the, the, the underlying risk values that we protect so the industry has been able to deal with with much of that but mm -hmm. more work needs to be done um, we've also got additional challenges of how do we actually go about trying to promote our product and help the emerging territories the emerging worlds that are prone to quite a lot of climate impact, mm. particularly flood, 
but also, as we've seen, earthquake. Mm -hmm. Um, And in many parts of those worlds, they're the poorest parts of the world Mm -hmm. who can't afford the reparation. So important for us as an industry to be able to recognise that and assist. Um, And we're on an important journey as Hiscox to be able to try and do that. And we support um, various initiatives like UNICEF and and the uh, disaster recovery facility to, to, to ensure that we can actually help promote those to promote those products. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, we're in a, a backdrop of a, a world where AI is making significant inroads. Mm. Um, and again, at Hiscox, we have, we've actually partnered with Google um, in exactly. order to be yeah. able to uh, explore how and how we can actually promote mm. business. Uh, mm. in, in, yeah. um, so that, that's an exciting development. I see that more of opportunity rather than fear. There's a lot, yeah. of, there's a lot of talk about it replacing jobs. And mm-hmm. uh, every time I've read historically about a, a revolution, whether an industrial one or an agricultural one, there's always been opportunity. You have to yeah. adapt, you have to change, but there's always opportunity. So I find that very exciting. Um, then in, in the terms of cyber, uh, the, the cyber world we've mentioned already continues to grow. Demand for that will in, continue to grow. We estimate that the premium income in that market will probably double within the next five years mm. wow. and probably a little bit uh, o- over detail but um, at the moment the transaction mechanisms of cyber have been very much either pro rata mm-hmm. or in terms of aggregate accessible loss mm-hmm. the world's changing and it's moving to cat accessible loss that will unlock more capital that yeah. will allow reinsurers to transact more business and therefore protect more underlying portfolios yeah those are some super exciting innovations and the point about sort of the protection gap and ensuring the that reinsurance serves its role in protecting yes of course the massive tivs in cat zones like florida but also flood zones and emerging economies and those kinds of things i think that's amazing work that you guys are doing there and like central to the mission of what reinsurance is existing to do as well, which is a really, really exciting piece. And the, the partnership with Google as well, we can touch on a little bit more, but um, I think you're exactly right. It's unlocking an absolute plethora of opportunities for those who see it as such rather than a huge sort of fear-based, like we're going to lose jobs. I think it unlocks a huge amount of opportunity and potential for the market. Yeah, but, yeah, totally agreed. I think we're in exciting times that move incredibly quickly. Yeah. Um, and what that does mean is that we've got to have a huge investment in people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it's the, the demands that are made upon us are ever increasing. Um, the, the succession plan of any organization is fundamentally critical. Yeah. And so bringing people in, into the organization, allowing them to, to develop themselves um, is a real differentiator for the successful organizations. And I'm really proud to be part of Hiscox who take that really, really seriously mm-hmm. and have done for, for decades. Mm. A, a real differentiator there. Yeah, oh, brilliant. And so I guess to wrap up, because we've got to, not keep you too long from the uh, thriving Bermuda Risk Summit over there. Uh, any highlights so far from the Risk Summit and anything you're looking forward to once you get back in there? I think looking forward to engaging with, with as I say, the wide array of people that are there. Mm. Um, and for me particularly, I think a real change has been seeing so many insurance commissioners actually yeah. part, of, part of the, yeah. the forum. Um, I, I don't know, but I guess they're representing over 100 million Americans yeah. Um, it's such a critical and fundamentally important aspect, and we're here to be able to ensure that we provide products so that they can pr- help facilitate products to their yeah. insurers. Um, so welcome them being here yeah, and the yeah. opportunity to, to catch up with some of them. No, fabulous. Well, thank you so much. This has been a delightful conversation and so great having you on the podcast.